to Peter Little from Anchor Capital to talk about the uh, international markets. Uh, Peter, um, welcome to the show. 12 days up in a row for the Australian market. That's what really startled me this morning. Yeah, thanks. I mean, they, they obviously cut rates um, pretty much like everybody else seems to be doing around the world. Um, so the dollar, I mean, the Aussie dollar even rallied last night, which which won't please the Reserve Bank of Australia at all. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's certainly an interesting one. I don't have any strong views on that, but uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, Australia is one thing, uh, South Africa is another, and the United States is something completely different because the world is going to be focused on the Labor Department this afternoon when they release the monthly non-farm payrolls data. Last month they created 252,000 jobs, I think it was. Uh, what do you think this time? And do you think it'll have a meaningful effect on the market? Will the market say, unless it's 100,000 or 500,000, nothing's going to happen apart from this thing continuing to go up? Yeah, I think so. I think the economists are expecting about 230,000 jobs to be added. All of the sort of employment prints that have come out this week, the ADP numbers, the unemployment numbers, have all been roughly in line with expectations. So I'm not expecting a, a huge deviation from that. Um, but, but I think you're right. I think um, unless it's a, it's a massive overall underprint, I don't think the market will read too much into it. Um, at the, late, the latest statement out of the, the U.S. was starting to indicate that they're going to be more aware of uh, international developments when they consider their hiking later in the year. So um, certainly there's a lot of stuff happening around the globe. And if they're starting to pay attention to those things and, and maybe slightly less attention to their local markets um, that would indicate that the it was this things time, Peter, it was this time last week that the that the Dow Jones um, well it was um, you know a few hours later than it is now but a week ago the Dow Jones fell one and a half percent because of a bad GDP print from the United States of America the world's largest economy previous month was five percent I think they came up with a 2.6 percent print uh, market fell and when I came in on Monday morning I thought to myself well with the Greek problems uh, are still hanging over the European markets and with the Dow Jones down one and a half percent close to 17,000 maybe the week would be a bad one but look at this thing now it's nearly 18,000 the Dow everything's sunny in the in the in the world market garden again yeah it's it's interesting I mean I guess you had conflicting things going on this week so you had sort of the bad news coming out of out of Greece and um, those problems will will continue to be ongoing I think the CDS markets are pricing in about a 70 percent probability of a default in Greece now um, but then on the flip side of that you had some positive news out of China where they lowered their reserve ratio by about 50 basis points and injected some liquidity into that market. So I think you've got all sorts of moving parts around the globe and, and the, the thing about the U.S. seems to be a, a relatively stable story compared to all of that. So I guess attracting, attracting good flows and, and, and continuing to go up. Any chance this European story is going to start to uh, uh, become meaningful again? I mean, people say to me that uh, the Romans once said that Greece is, uh, is a country with a great history, but uh, it's a small country, 11 and a half million people, but it seems to be exerting an influence again. And I think the, 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 the main story is that perhaps there's going to be political contagion given what has happened in, in the last 10 days or so. Any chance of that happening? Yeah, I think certainly the financial contagion is much more limited this time. I think the, the, the European banks have about 20 billion euros of exposure to Greek debt, uh, which compares to about 300 billion last time. So, so last time uh, the Greeks got into the same position, um, the Germans and the French had to worry that if they didn't resolve this, it could knock onto their, their uh, home markets and cause them to potentially have to bail out their own banks. Um, this time, that sort of financial implications are relatively limited. But what you have seen, obviously, is um, you know a few years of austerity in, in Europe has caused some of the peripheral countries to to start, or at least the people in some of those countries, to start supporting some of these anti-austerity parties. And um, I think a lot of those guys will be watching very closely with what happens in Greece. So so far, uh, Cyprus and, and Syriza have had very little. Um, give from anybody in Europe. I think uh, Vakaris, the, the Greek finance minister, met with um, German's finance, Germany's finance minister Schäuble yesterday and there was certainly no signs of a budge from them. So I think Europe are, 
are having to take a pretty strong stance this time um, because they don't want this to sort of knock on from a political sp perspective and, and countries like uh, Spain um, to start seeing that, well, if they, if they push back, they get all these concessions from the rest of the European Union and, and you have that, that type of political knock-on effect. So I don't think it's going to be resolved for a there, while. Thanks very much for you. Thanks very much for your time this morning. We'll look forward to those non-farm payrolls numbers uh, th this afternoon and uh, maybe next week. Uh, well, next week is another week, of course, but uh, with the Dow Jones close to 18,000, I wouldn't bet against it right now. That's Peter Little from Anchor.